The United States has at least 2,000 nuclear weapons. We call it a nuclear deterrent. It enables us to tolerate a lot of nuclear weapon states. We tolerate nukes in the hands of the Russians, the Chinese, the North Koreans, the Indians, even the French. The case of Pakistani nukes is particularly egregious if we're talking about tolerating nukes. They've probably got between 60 to 100 nukes. They've sold the technology to Iran, to Libya, to North Korea, and they happen to harbour more terrorist groups, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, uh, lashkar e taiba than any other country. And yet, we tolerate Pakistani nukes. What's so different about Iran? Elliot says, it's a crazy messianic regime, uh, but the fact is, it's always exercised great caution when it comes to using military force. Elliot says it threatens to destroy Israel. Uh, I can well understand why Israel could not tolerate a nuclear Iran. It's a small country with a unique history. Its leaders are tasked with the solemn duty to ensure that the Jewish state is never again destroyed. And Iran's leaders have threatened to do just that. The United States has a special responsibility to ensure the Jewish state's survival. But that's precisely why we have tolerated Israel having nuclear bombs in its basement and helped Israel acquire submarines and long-range bombers so as to enhance its deterrent against a potential nuclear strike by another country. Not enough of a deterrent? then let's extend our nuclear deterrent to Israel so that Iran will understand that if it dares to strike Israel, it will face, in the words of Secretary of State Clinton, obliteration from the United States. And in the meantime, let's build up Israel's missile defenses so that it can effectively defend against Iranian missiles as well as deter their use. I'm not advocating that we should tolerate Iranian nukes. On the contrary, we should make every effort to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. Because an Iran with nukes will threaten our national security interests and those of our Middle Eastern allies. We'll put the Israelis on a hair trigger. It will ignite a nuclear arms race in the, in the Middle East. It will make a mockery of the non-proliferation regime and give cover for the Iranians to throw their weight around in the vital oil-rich Arabian Peninsula and beyond. But there are ways short of military preventive action by the United States to deal with these serious problems. With oil at $40 to $50 a barrel, economic sanctions can have a powerful impact. If we work vigorously to bring Russia and China on board so as to uh, demonstrate to Iran that it will be isolated in the region, and if we seek to make peace between Israel and Syria to enhance that isolation, we may be able to convince the Iranians that they are better off taking our offer of a secure nuclear energy program and security guarantees than having nuclear weapons. That's the kind of vigorous, aggressive, sustained diplomacy that might just work. But if it fails, then we should move to contain, to deter, to isolate and punish Iran, not attack it.